Hey everyone, it's me again, Kamado Kirk, aka Tyler, coming back to you again tonight on this beautiful summer night. The kids are out playing, having a wonderful evening. It's toasty, but tonight we're setting up the Joe with our Joe Tisserie to make pork tenderloin on the rotisserie. It's going to be really good. It's uh, another uh, family favorite of mine. It's super simple to make. You just have the right tools. We'll get into this. It doesn't take much, but the payoff is huge. So here we go. I have my Joe set up with my Joe Tisserie ring uh, put on there ready to go. I have the ash basket put in the bottom with the divider in the middle, the charcoal divider. I've stacked all the charcoal to the rear and then I've simply just lined the front portion of the basket with foil. It just helps keep grease down and ease cleanup and keeps the grill a little cleaner. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get this lit. I have about an hour and a half, two hours till, the, till dinner time. So I wanna get this lit, get the charcoal good and evenly heated across, add a little bit of apple wood smoke, get that combusting, get that nice blue smoke going and get this grill up to about 350, 375, 400's okay. But we're gonna get this thing fired up, so. Okay, so I'm gonna let this fire breathe. I'm gonna leave the Joe open for 10 or 15 minutes and let this fire. I'm gonna monitor, I'm gonna sit out here with it and monitor it just to make sure it doesn't get too hot uh, so my temperatures don't get out of control. But once we come back from this, I'm gonna add the wood, let that start combusting, get a nice, a nice even, nice light blue smoke going. And then we will go inside and I'll show you how to prepare the tenderloin to get put on here. So it's been 10 minutes, we've got some good heat. It's evenly distributed across uh, the charcoals because of the way I lit it with the map. It doesn't take much to get this charcoal going, especially when you've got the Joe completely wide open and ready to go. It's just got plenty of time, plenty of room to breathe. So I'm going to go ahead and take, I got two chunks of some apple wood, goes great with pork. I'm just going to put those on there. That's toasty. Put those on there and then I'm going to close it up and I'm going to set the bottom vent about halfway open and I'm going to set the top vent to again about halfway open i'll sit here and monitor it and get it up to in between 350 and 400 is fine you also have to remember that with the jotisserie you have a few extra places for air that can come in so you may need to adjust your vents down just a little bit but you can see that wood's already starting to smoke so we're going to get this shut and let it come up to temp and let this wood get into its flavorful state you don't want to put anything on there when the smoke is really acrid you want to wait for it to fully combust and start putting off that flavorful light blue smoke that will just kiss the pork and make it absolutely delicious. All right, so we'll be back when this thing is ready to go. So we got the Joe sitting here at just about 375. That smoke's combusted. I don't know, you probably won't be able to see it on video, but it smells fantastic. That apple wood is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So this is the pork tenderloin that my wife picked up at the store. I'm gonna get this on the spit, show you how to do that. I'm gonna be using yellow mustard as a binder. Don't worry, you can't taste it. It just helps hold the, the seasoning on or the rub. And then I will be using this pork mojo blend from Atlanta Grill Company. It's fantastic on pork. Frankly, all of their uh, spice line is absolutely delicious. My favorite, love to use it. So first thing I'm gonna do, so I'm pork tenderloin out. I patted it dry out of the package and then I have my jotisserie spit here. And I don't know if you can see that, but on the spit, you probably can't see it, but I scratched a little line on there and it's just a little life hack when you're using this. And that's on there so I know where to place the bottom spit so that it's equidistant and this ends up being, everything ends up being centered on the spit once I put it on there. So simply for this, I'm gonna find the meatiest part of the pork tenderloin and I'm going to feed it right through the pork. If I can get it on there, just carefully. Get that push on there, followed by the second piece of pork tenderloin. Now, if you have a bigger pork tenderloin, of course, it'll just be one. But 
I'm feeding a family of five here and I don't want to waste food if I don't have to. So then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to try to get as much of it as possible. Line up that line there, get that on there. And then I want to compress this down as much as I possibly can and get this put on there like that and get that as tight. Now this isn't going to take very long to cook. This is only about a pound and a half of meat. So this will probably take 20 or 30 minutes with that. But that's okay. If it gets done early, just wrap it in foil and rest it. So then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to tighten that around there like that. Tighten that around like that just to make sure it's held on there nice. And then I have my one dirty hand here. I have my Ziploc bags. Put those in there just to prevent cross-contamination. Get those in there. Just like that. So first things first, I'm going to just put mustard all over the outside of this. So it's a binder. And then I'm going to rub that all in there. Get a good, get a good even application of the mustard. Like I said, if you don't like mustard, it doesn't matter. You won't be able to taste it when everything is over with. And then I'm just going to take my AP Pork Moho from Atlanta Grill Company, and I'm going to liberally apply it to the entire outside of the pork. The kids are out playing; they're having a blast. Can you hear that? I love that sound. I love the sound of kids out having fun and socializing. And getting some fresh air, not stuck in the house all day during this extended summer break. Make sure we get it all in the nooks and crannies there, just like that. So once all that is on there, pretty simple. We'll get this put on the Joe and we'll check on it. Target temperature, 145. Okay, we have our Joe sitting here just at about 350. And we'll see how, where that temperature goes. I'll just monitor it as I, as I sit out here with it. But I'm going to try to keep it between 350 and 400. The nice thing about this, if you already have a Joe, you know, is that once it settles in at a temp, it's really, really good at staying there. So we'll get our, we'll get our, our pork put on the rotisserie. So get this opened up here, nice and warm. I'm just going to take this and insert it inside here. And you see how I'm not centered? Like this is way off to the left. So I'm gonna fix that and be right back. I'm gonna make that exactly centered. Okay, we've got that centered. Fire up the old jotisserie motor and get that spinning. So yeah, you'll see it's flopping around. I probably could have trussed it up with some kitchen twine if I wanted to. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it one more little kiss of seasoning as it spins around just from what came off from me messing with it. Just get some on there, get it down in that little crack between the two pieces. Got this one big chunk right here. There we go. Get that all put on there just like that and we'll come back and check on it again in just a little bit and try to get it up to 145 before we let it rest. All right. We've been sitting here at a solid 350 now for just about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the temp and see where we're at on this cook. See if we need to turn it up a little bit so we can make dinner in time or if we're right on track here. So after about 15 minutes at 350, try not to touch the spit. We're up at 93, pretty good considering, you know, fresh out of the refrigerator. This one's up at about 115. So. I'll probably open my vents just a little bit. You know, this big fat part's about 104. We're trying to get it to 145. So we'll turn it back on and I'm gonna open my vents just a little bit, get the temperature going up a little bit higher. And I can already see that there's a nice crust starting to form right there on the outside. And this fat's rendering away. This is gonna be delicious. It smells so good. I wish I could throw the smell through the camera. I'm gonna be pretty happy, I can already tell. Okay, so I had to open up my vents a little bit to get it done in time for dinner so, you know, the family could eat. Let's give this thing a look and see what the temperature looks like. Ooh, that looks fantastic. Turn off the rotisserie and we'll give it a quick poke here. 
148. Yep. Oh man. Yep. She's she's a done. So we'll get her off. Let her get her off the spit on a cutting board. Let it rest for about three minutes and slice it up. All right, we've got it off the spit. It's been resting here just for about three minutes. It doesn't take much. Uh, USDA recommends that at 145 is safe to eat as long as you let it rest for about three minutes after taking it off the heat. So here we go. Let's slice it up and see what we get here. Ooh, look at that. Perfection. Look at that. It doesn't get much better than that. The beautiful bark on the outside that's not coming off with my hands. It smells amazing. It's perfectly cooked all the way through. It doesn't get much better than that. A little bit of Pitmaster's Delight here. You gotta try it before you feed it to the family. Oh, melts in the mouth and the crunch is out of this world. That is fantastic. My wife's got some sweet potatoes inside, some harvest carrots, and the kids like applesauce with their pork. Excuse me while I finish chewing. But, wow. That is absolutely fantastic. Well, dinner was a hit. Even better, it was super easy to make. Absolutely delicious. So, thank you for joining me tonight. And I hope if you try this, you enjoy it. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Also, while you're down there, hit like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. All right, we'll see you again next time. Have a good one.